Hey, what's up everyone? This is gonna be Arts and Farts episode 13? 13, lucky number 13. All right, yeah, cause it's, yeah, it's number 13. So if you haven't seen it before, this is a show where I'm gonna draw from a reference image and I have the reference image up on my computer here cause I'm still having printer issues, wine, wine. But yeah, so I'm gonna provide a reference image. I'm gonna draw it. And if you feel like drawing along with me, the uh, reference image link to that is gonna be in the description of the video. So you can draw along with me, and if you wanna post it on social media so I can see it, you can post it with the hashtag arts and farts. I'll spell it out. So today I'm gonna to be drawing uh, this cool Hercules beetle that I found. Um, I really like these beetles, and uh, I started off arts and farts, the very first episode drawing an insect, and I said I was gonna do more of those. And uh, I was thinking about this morning what I was gonna do for today's video and I thought it'd be fun to go back to the roots of the show and, and draw a bug. So we're drawing a Hercules beetle. I thought about drawing a Hercules beetle larva but I couldn't find a really good like close-up photo of one. But uh, this, this guy is really cool. So I'm drawing like the crest of the Hercules beetle up here. It's like on their, their uh, I think it's their, their thorax I believe. Um, I'm supposed, I always, I always talk about how much I know about bugs and I can't remember the name of it right now. It's the section above the abdomen that's kind of like the neck shoulder area of uh, beetles and some other insects. But, uh, so they have this like crest up here and that's what they use to like grapple with, with other beetles. They're pretty, pretty, pretty interesting creatures. I have, I've based uh, a few characters off of insects. If you if you go way back to my days of drawing um, like Errant and Viutil and all that, I, I drew a lot of like anthropomorphic insect characters and uh, one of the characters was based off of the Hercules beetle that was, uh, his name was Trujillo if you remember him. He was like a big beetle dude with like a giant club type weapon. Uh, and so yeah, it's like, it's I, I really like Hercules beetles. I, I've always thought that they looked really cool. You know, ever since I was a little kid, you know, I've been fascinated with insects in particular, particularly uh, these beetles. And uh, so yeah, I'm, that's, why, that's why I'm drawing one today. Long story short, like beetles, gonna draw one. You can, you can draw it too if you, if you want to. So yeah, and they're kinda, they're, they're kinda cute. They're like fuzzy and they've, uh, they've, they've got like really cool uh, like fur that like covers their body and it's, it's kind of unique for, for a lot of insects that have like fur like that. You know, it's like spiders and like bumblebees and stuff like that have fur, but not, not a lot of like larger like beetles do. And I think that's, they have, they almost have like a mustache. Like how can you not love a beetle with a mustache? Like that's just, that's just awesome. I'm gonna draw that mustache here. Cause when I was drawing the like anthropomorphic version um, for the character, I basically gave him like, you know, he had like a big like kind of mane because they have this fur all around their their heads and their their thorax and it just I don't know it just looks really cool. I'm I'm a huge nerd. I'm just going to like gush about insects for a while. But uh yeah, anyway, so I decided to try something a little bit different today with my medium. Um I'm using an erasable blue pencil. This is a really old one. Um it's a Dixon, a old erasable Thinex blue pencil. And um, you can, you may not be able to find this exact one if you want to try one. They have like Call Erase and I think Ticonderoga makes like an erasable blue pencil. Um, or you can just basically search for like a non-photo blue pencil. The cool thing about these is if you um, like sketch and then ink over them and then put them in digitally, uh, it's really easy to remove the line work and just leave the like uh, the black ink or, or whatever line work you did. Uh, because it's like it's really light and it's really easy to like select the specific color in order to edit it out so it's it's kind of a fun thing to use I used to use these a lot uh, more often like a few years ago um, I was drawing more with ballpoint and I would use uh, like an erasable blue or erasable red pencil to like sketch underneath and then draw over with the ballpoint and so that's what I'm gonna be doing today because I I've, I've been thinking about it and I haven't done it for a while so I thought it'd be kind of fun um, to do something like that a little bit different. It, lo it looks like it looks like to me It's showing up pretty well in the video. It's gonna be pretty light at first, but I'm gonna go over it with ballpoint So be, you'll be able to see um, Everything that I've got worked out here, but they're they're really fun to use and they do erase really well um, Even with just like the stock eraser that comes on them as you can see it like it works It works really well. So it's, and it kind of looks cool like if you even want to like 
do some shading with it before you before you uh, do the line work on top of it. If you're not planning on erasing all of the blue and kind of you know being able to see the sketch underneath, you can kind of shade with it underneath and then draw on top of it, and it you can kind of do some like interesting colorful shading that way. Um, and I think I'm probably going to experiment a little bit more with that, and like especially with uh, with gouache because I'm I've been doing more of that lately. I think using like an erasable pencil and then doing gouache over it could be pretty fun. Um, so I'm going to be experimenting with a few different things, but right now just uh, taking it back uh, a little ways to when I used to draw with these erasable pencils and uh, ballpoint. I've used the red ones as well. I still have a bunch of the um, erasable red pencils, so I might pull one of those out as well, maybe, maybe for next week's episode. Um, but these guys are really fun to draw. It's always really fun to draw insects. It's kind of a, a challenge, especially if you don't do it. A whole lot because they're really kind of like they're really strange and foreign and you know kind of possess a lot of like unique shapes that you don't really see in too many other places and you know unless you're drawing a lot of like crustaceans or something but like the you know the way their legs work and their bodies are put together it's kind of like a really unique and challenging thing um, to draw it's, it's good practice especially you know bringing it back to the first episode that's what I that's what I said it's good practice if you're not used to drawing this type of thing and if you're not used to drawing like a bunch of different things like you may find yourself and this is super common for a lot of artists that like maybe you just draw like characters or portraits or you draw you know one type of subject matter um, noticeably more than anything else and that's kind of like your comfort zone it's good to have a comfort zone I have one and I retreat to it regularly when I have art block or whatever but uh, it's good. It's good to push your push your uh, boundaries a little bit, even if it's just for for practice sake. You know, even if you're not planning on drawing bugs on the uh, like on a long term basis, like it can. It's still good to uh, you know stretch some different artistic muscles, uh, so to speak, and just kind of build your vocabulary of things that you you know how to draw. And I'm always talking about that. You know, it's like drawing drawing from memory and being able to draw a number of different things. It, you know, it's hard to draw something if you haven't, like, seen it before. If you've seen something before in the real world, like, for, say, a Hercules beetle, and you're like, oh, I've seen one of those dudes, like, walking around. You can probably um, draw a much more accurate depiction from your memory than if you had never seen a Hercules beetle just walking around before. And, uh, you know, you may not be able to see him just walking around, but... Um, maybe you live in that the area where they you know kind of are more common but uh, you know it's the next best best thing is, is drawing from a reference or drawing from you know a photo or a video or you know if you like to watch those like documentaries about different animals and insects and stuff like that uh, it's it's can be can be really beneficial to to build your vocabulary of things that you know how to draw and just you know the, the things you can visualize because I like to draw when I visualize um, or uh, when I like to draw rather I like to visualize what I'm going to draw before I actually put it on the paper and you know it's like to the point where I'm like closing my eyes and kind of imagining in my head uh, what I'm going to draw and what the drawing is going to look like and very rarely does it end up exactly how I picture it in my head but um, it's a, I, I find it's a good technique to kind of like prepare yourself prepare yourself for a drawing and it's you know, very, very much the same idea as like doing a rough sketch. It's kind of like you're building out your vis visualization of what the drawing is going to be before you actually finalize it. But I like to do that process in my head. And, you know, like now that I've been staring at this picture of this Hercules beetle for a while and I'm now drawing it, like I'm making myself much more familiar with the shapes. So I'm building like my mental you know, reference library for this Hercules beetle right now. And I, I, I'd be willing to bet that if I drew this again, you know, like tonight or something like that, a few hours later, that I would be able to get a much more accurate drawing um, without looking at a reference than if I hadn't done this earlier. So it's one of those things. And I'm talking about drawing this beetle, but that goes for drawing the figure, that goes for drawing, you know, buildings, cars, plants. You know, the more the more you familiarize yourself with something, and build that mental like reference library, the uh, easier it's going to be to um, not only draw those things again from memory, but to like for for example, like create your own species of plant. You know, for like a 
sci-fi or a fantasy story that you're writing or something like that or if you're doing like concept art for a game or something like that you know and they and they want you to like create alien species of plants to like put on a planet in the game or whatever you know you've drawn a lot of real plants and you kind of understand how real plants work and their how they're constructed visually and you know how they exist in space and you know you can create something new based off of that existing knowledge that you have and I think that's like a really cool like superpower that you have as an artist you know it's like it's funny to think of it that way but it's uh it's really unique and you got to think of it as as kind of like your superpower right because that's what that's what sets you apart it's like your artistic vision and your ability to see things in your head and then reproduce them on paper and create new fantastic things that's that's pretty pretty amazing i think when you think about it that way um but uh here i am just drawing bugs anyway but you know this is the same thing that i'm talking about when i when i was talking about you know developing a character that's based off of a hercules beetle uh i looked at a lot of pictures of hercules beetles i mean google it and you know do rough sketches and revisions and like try different things and drew 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 a lot of beetles and that you know drawing beetles is fun but you know if you want to design cars you know look at a bunch of cars and then you can design some cool space cars or whatever based on the uh, the knowledge you have in the mental library you're building. I probably sound completely crazy right now, but I'm kind of just rambling and going with it while I'm drawing this beetle. Um, I've always loved drawing insects. You know, from I, I've talked about that in a few of my videos, like how from a young age I would, you know, collect insects and bring them inside and draw them and stuff like that. And uh, it's it's always something that I've enjoyed. And I've, you know, over the years done it in a number of different ways. You know, I do like... Like, I've been talking about the anthropomorphic ones, like very stylized ones, a lot of realistic insects, and I've drawn them a lot of different ways, and, you know, it's a good, like, fallback when I want to practice a new style or something like that. Like, maybe I'll draw a bug because I enjoy drawing bugs. It's not a lot of extra thought for me because I've been doing it a lot. I'm very familiar with them, and I can just, you know, play around with a new medium without having to worry about coming up with something new. You know, I can just draw something that's familiar to me and... You know, it, it might not be insects for you. For you, it might be something totally different, but the concept is, is the same regardless of what you're drawing, you know, whether it be figures or cars or buildings or plants or whatever. I could go on and on. But, uh, yeah, so I'm drawing this beetle. I think that's probably, like, the fourth or fifth time I've said that. And this is a little bit, like I said, this is a little bit out of my comfort zone. I did used to draw like this, um, you know, uh, a few years ago. But I haven't been doing it for a while, so it feels kind of like uncomfortable and strange, but uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I was drawing more with ballpoint, um, you know, during Inktober and stuff like that. And I kind of, uh, you, you know, I, I didn't really do like a day for day Inktober. I kind of just drew an ink whenever I had time to uh, draw in my sketchbook. So I, I didn't really hold myself to a strict schedule or anything like that, but... Uh, I still I still had a lot of fun. I, I tried some new things. I got back into drawing with ballpoint and, you know, the parallel pens and doing some different stuff like that. And I did I did really enjoy it. It was a little bit frustrating at times, but I think, you know, anytime you try new stuff or try to refamiliarize yourself with stuff that you've, you know, forgotten, you know, it can be it can be a challenging uh experience. But uh I did find that it was a rewarding experience nonetheless, so I can't really uh, complain too much about it and here I am just you know complaining about it so I'll just keep drawing this beetle I, I love drawing like all the little hairs and stuff and I'm going a little bit I'm exaggerating on the detail a little bit with the hairs but it's just because I'm having a lot of fun right now um because they have these really like coarse hairs it's not quite as fluffy as how I draw it but I like drawing it fluffy it's like a little bit it's a little bit cute you know a little fluffy little beetle and uh, I definitely want to get back into um, drawing Aaron. That was a, you know, I, I've talked about it a lot. You know, people ask me often, like, oh, are you ever planning on redrawing that? I do still have the, like, uh, a test issue that I did available on my Gumroad. That's still for free because that was, like, kind of like a style test. And I did do, like, a full issue of it. I am going to continue it uh, someday. Right now I'm working on Cull. I took a little bit of a uh, break on Cull because I was um, doing... Uh, some other work like an actual job and spending some time with that so I, I took a little break I kind of just have been drawing um, casually and, and a few commissions here and there 
um, in the past like week or two. But I'm definitely like in the in the mood to get to like way back into drawing um, and, and go at it full speed again. I've got a, a few projects that I'm working on right now that I'm really excited about uh, working on a few things with a few other people. Not sure how much I can talk about it all of it yet, but um, I am working on more Never Tales comics. That's still in the works. So if you are a fan of the Never Tales comic that I work on with Daniel Bishop, um, that's going to be, well, I'm working on it now, not like right now, because right now I'm drawing the Beetle, but I am like, you know, in the process of working on it. So anyway, as if that weren't obvious enough already, I'm pretty much wrapping up this Beetle guy here. So I'm pretty much just going to like draw his other leg. Like really quick, right in there. And he's like sitting on a log, or whatever. You know, beetles chill on logs. It, it's like their thing, or whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about. But it's cool. So yeah, um, I didn't talk about the pen I'm using at all, but I have used it before. Um, I, this is the Pentel RSVP, uh, this is, this is the fine one, so it's the, the little bit smaller one, you can probably tell that the, if you, if you watch my other videos where I do with the Pentel RSVP, that was the medium one, and this is one, this one is a little bit smaller, but it's a really nice pen to use, you get a really, like, nice, smooth line, and you don't, you don't get too much of the, like, you know, globs that most ballpoint pens get where you, after you use it for a bit, has like a little glob of ink. Um, especially with the fine size because the, the tip is a lot smaller than the other pens, so it uh, it doesn't like clog up as much. It's, it's really nice, I really like it. If you're looking for a good ballpoint pen to try out and like actually draw seriously with it, definitely give this one a shot. They're pretty cheap. I mean, you can just find them at like Staples or Office Depot or probably even like Walmart or Target or something. And they're not very expensive at all. Like you'll you'll probably spend a few bucks for, you know, a bunch of them. I think I bought like a whole box, like twenty four of them for like I don't know, like seven bucks or something like that. So I'm I'm set on these pens for a while because I spent a long time trying different ballpoint pens, and this was the one that uh, kind of won out over the other ones for my personal favorite uh, ballpoint pen. It's just an all around good pen. You can watercolor over it. You know, it's really quite versatile for such a unassuming drawing tool. So that's that's about that pen. So I used the the Pentel RSVP and the Dixon erasable blue pencil up here. And I drew a beetle. And maybe you like to draw a beetle too. So if you uh, drew along with me or you're gonna draw along um, with the reference after the video's over, I'd love to see it. Put it up on social media under the hashtag. The hashtag's in the description. Um, and as well as like the tools I used, if you missed those, that's all going to be in the description. The uh, reference image link, that's all going to be down there. So anyway, Arts and Farts episode 13, I drew a beetle. I said it like 20 times. I, if you missed it, I, I don't know how that happened at all. Maybe you had the sound off and you weren't watching it. Uh, that It wouldn't really make sense. But yeah, Arts and Farts episode 13. Thanks for watching. I had a great time. Uh, you guys are the best. I love you as always. I'll see you next time. Mm, bye.